So what I want you to do, I want you to um, go through this question, answer the two questions at the end in red uh, using the information provided in the problem here. Um, <clears throat> I want you to pause the video right now and uh, do that task. When you think you have an answer, go ahead and hit play. All right, so hopefully now you have an answer to these two questions. But my question to you is, did you use algebra? What I want you to do right now, uh, now that you've gotten this, I want you to try to write, uh, use some algebra to figure out this question of, what is the maximum number of people that may rent a boat without sinking it? All right, so remember, choose your variable, your unknown, okay? And then figure out uh, an expression to go with that. Uh, and also, you're going to want to use this 1,200 pounds, right? Because that's, that's each the maximum that each boat can carry as far as pounds go. So write an expression to figure out um, how many people you could put on there, including their gear, uh, that would get you to 1,200 pounds. Pause the video now and complete that. So, a couple of things to highlight here. Um, first of all, each boat can only carry 1,200 pounds. So that's obviously going to be our max. So the max is going to end up equaling 1,200. All right? Each person is, we're going to assume, 150 pounds. So every time you put a person in, you're going to have uh, 150 pounds for each person. You also have 200 pounds of gear, no matter what, plus, that's probably an important word there, plus 10 pounds for each person. Notice that you should have noticed the key word there, each. So what am I doing? Each person is, every time I put another person on, I'm adding 10 pounds. So that's repeated addition. We're going to multiply. Now what I don't know, x is number of people. I don't know that. So what I need to do then is uh, I need to use that in my expression. So um, the number of people, okay, each of those is going to be 150. So every time I add a person, I'm going to be adding 150. So that's 150 times x plus 10 pounds for each person as well. And then we also have 200 pounds no matter what. So this is the gear. This is the weight per person, and this is the weight of the gear per person. So all together, every person that comes in, you might have done this in your work, if I combine like terms, every person that comes in is going to add 160 pounds. Notice 160 per person. That's going to get us to 1,200. Okay? Now, I can solve this equation. Remember, we're figuring out, first of all, we have to figure out if we want to know what x, we have to know what 160 x's is. So remember, we're going reverse order of operations. We've got to subtract the 200 out of there. And I get 160 equals 1,000, 160x. Divide both sides by 160. And we get 1,000 divided by 160, 6.25 people. Well, obviously, you can't have one-fourth of a person. That would be gross. It's a little, little uh, murder joke there. You can't cut paper on it. Never mind. All right. So obviously our answer here logically is we can have a maximum of six people. If I go up to seven people, I'm over the weight limit. Now, the issue is this. Six is not our only answer. I could have six, five, four, three, two, one or zero people in the boat, technically. So how do I show that? How do I show every possible answer? Well, the answer to that question is that we cannot use an equation for this. We have to use an inequality. So the question is, what is an inequality? So an inequality basically boils down to this. Let's see if you remember, it's a comparison between two quantities. That might not ring a bell. However, by the way, you should be taking notes on this. This probably does. Less than or greater than. Okay? Less than or greater than. Um, those are inequalities. So when I say 3 is less than 7, you are comparing these two quantities. 
There's another one we want to add, which is uh, this one. Uh, notice there's a line underneath the less than symbol. This simply means less than or equal to. So if I write 7 is less than 7, that's not true. However, if I were to write 7 is less than or equal to 7, that would be true. It's an or question, so if it's, it's not less than, but it is equal to, so that's okay. Um, so an algebraic inequality then, just like an algebraic equation, is basically an inequality that contains a variable. So x is greater than or equal to 7. So how does this relate to our problem that we just did? Remember, we had multiple solutions. Notice, x is greater than or equal to 7. Think about how many solutions I have for x. Remember what a solution is? It's a number that if I plug it in for the variable, makes the whole thing true. So I could plug in 8 here. I could plug in 9, 10, 11, 12. I could go all the way up to infinity. I could plug in 7.000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
Now, 6.25 is not a solution. It can't equal 6.25. It can equal everything up to 6.25, but it can't actually equal it. So you might say, okay, what if we put a dot really, really close to it? Well, then I could take another dot and put it even closer. And then you could take another dot and put it even closer. We can go on and on like that until now to the end of infinity. Okay? So what we do is this. We're still going to put a dot at 6.25, but we're not going to fill it in. So that's going to show that this is where, this is our breaking point. Anything bigger than this doesn't work. Anything smaller than this does work. Okay? And by the way, if we were going over 1,200 the arrow, we'd go the other way. Okay? This is our breaking point, but this does not count in the solution set. All right? So one little thing you might want to write here, a little key. If you have an open dot, that means you had a uh, less than or greater than sign. So remember, less than or greater than, it's not or equal to. If it were equal to it, it would be part of the solution set. If I have a closed dot, that means it's got the little line underneath. Remember, little line underneath, take a little bit of extra lead, fill that in. So let's just take a quick look at what this will look like with um, just a regular problem. Here we have the problem 5 is less than 2x minus 3. Uh, so this is kind of similar to what we do with equations. We have 2x, but then when we take away 3 from it, this is saying that that's, uh, 5 is less than that. So to do this, this is just like solving a two-step equation. We've got to get rid of that minus 3 first, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That gets rid of that. And all I have, 8 is less than 2x. So there are 2x's here. 8 is less than whatever that is, so when I divide by 2, I have 4 is less than x. Now you could also read this as x is greater than 4, uh, which is going to come in into play when we graph this. So when I, I'm, First I'm going to make my number line. You're going to do this for all the problems you solve. Notice how I put 4 in the center, because that's our break, that's our, our tipping point here. Um, now it's less than, so notice there's no line underneath, so I'm just going to put, uh, I'm going to put an open dot here. Remember, if it were less than or equal to, I would put a closed dot. And now I'm looking at this, and I'm trying to decide which way my arrow should go. Well, to do that, uh, notice this says 4 is less than x. I'm going to look at numbers on either side of 4. Uh, so let's take a look at 3 first. If I plug 3 in for x and test that, is 4 less than 3? No. So the arrow cannot go that way. That means it has to go the other way. Notice what happens when I plug 5 in. 4 is less than 5, so that, way, that means that every number greater than 4 has to work for this particular uh, inequality. And that would work if I plugged it in the first step or the last step. So now we have a graph of all the possible solutions for uh, this problem here. This is what you'll do in your quick check, in your basics, and then in the applications you'll be writing inequalities and then solving them. So what I want you to do, I want you to... Uh...